Hello students, welcome to my next lecture. Today we are going to talk about channels of distribution. I Dr. Rohan Prabhakar Bhavale welcome you all. By studying this particular chapter, we will try to understand the nature and structure of the industrial distribution system. We will understand the types of industrial middlemen, their role and importance in the distribution channel will appreciate the functions performed and the responsibilities undertaken by the distributors. We will understand the reasons why distributors are preferred by industrial buyers. And in the last part, we will appreciate the partners in progress relationship between the manufacturers and the distributors. We will start with the introduction part. When a company or manufacturer produces goods or services, it has the immediate responsibility to distribute and sell them to the industrial and constitutional customers. The industrial customers generally constitute of wholesalers, retailers, manufacturers, educational institutes, governments, hospitals, public utilities and other formal organizations. There are various intermediaries who are involved in a distribution and selling process helping the manufacturers to make their goods reach to the end users. Thus, a network of channel that helps to flow the goods from the producers to the consumers through a set of interdependent organization that is intermediaries is called as distribution channel it is also called as trade channel or marketing channel channels are tools used by management to move the goods from the place of production to the place of consumption in the progression the titles of goods get transferred from buyers to buyers and sellers to buyers industrial distribution is unique as there are several different methods of channeling the products and services to the industrial customers. The type of product, the selling price of the product and technical knowledge required to sell the product all play a considerable role in selecting the proper sales or distribution channel. Unlike consumer organizations, the decisions taken by the industrial organizations on distribution channel is of great significance as the decisions involved are long term nature and cannot be changed frequently. The industrial organizations carry on certain important functions till the products reach to the customers like utilizing the services of transportation companies for distribution. The services of warehouses for safe storage of goods, inventory control, order processing and selection of marketing channel. This necessitates taking important decisions like devising effective communication tools, then planning promotional activities, managing financial etc. that help in serving the consumers better. Learning objectives, the main objectives of industrial marketing channel are listed here. The channel participants must feel motivated to be part of the network. The channel must itself provide the empowerment to the participants to make commitment to the consumers and enable them to do so. It must make the product value, place value and time value effective. The channel should have uh, intermittent cooperation and coordination and control mechanism. The channel must be responsive to change, adaptive to change and entrepreneurial so that the industrial bias need is properly addressed. 
the channel institution must find it remunerative to advocate the forward supply chain linkages. Now we'll see the nature of industrial distribution channel. The nature of industrial distribution channel is quite different from the consumer goods distribution channel. The intermediary stock, the products are distributing thereby assuming part of the burden of marketing the product and maintaining close contract with the customers. There are various factors that affect the distribution of industrial goods. These are geographical distribution, size, intermediary characteristics and mixed channels. We'll see one by one. First stage geographical distribution. The industrial distributors are concentrated highly on highly in the industrial markets they serve and certain other places that have large number of industries like large towns and cities. Sites. Unlike consumer markets, the industrial markets tend to have a fewer channel of distribution. Even the industrial channel is shorter in size as organization buyers expect intermediate immediate product availability, technical expertise and prompt after sales service. This indirectly calls for investment in training and physical facilities for the industrial organizations. Intermediary characteristics. The intermediaries involved in the industrial marketing are techni technically qualified who maintain very close relationship with industrial organizations. Industrial manufacturers tend to develop and depend more heavily on each member of the channel and may do not more to support the channel members. Industrial distributors, brokers and agents are some type of intermediaries used by industrial marketers to reach the customers. Next is mixed channel. A combination of direct and indirect channel is used by some industrial marketers to cater to different market segments or when they have some resource constraints. To cater to large volume customers, industrial firms generally use their own sales force and to cover a small scale organization, they use independent distributors. In case of large geographical territories, due to resource constraint, they use their agents called as manufacturers representatives. This is the diagram of industrial marketing channel with various levels. From manufacturers to the industrial customers, we are reaching to various channels. First can be zero level channel. So here manufacturers can directly sell their products to industrial customers. There can be one level channels like uh, from manufacturers to industrial distributors to the industrial customers or manufacturers through the manufacturers sell branch to the industrial consumers. This is, these are the examples of one level channel. Also there can be two level channels from manufacturers to the manufacturers representatives and then industrial distributors to the final industrial consumers. So zero level that is manufacturers to the industrial customers, one level where single intermediary is involved and two level where two intermediaries are involved in the channel network. Structure of industrial channel. There are different ways in which an industrial channel can be structured. Some of the industrial channel structure are direct while some are indirect. First, we'll learn about direct channel structures. In direct channel structures, the entire task necessary to create the cells and to deliver their products to the industrial customers is performed by the manufacturers themselves. The various tasks involved in this process are contracting, 
the potential customers, communicating and negotiating with them, financing and selling, storing the products, transportation, and providing related services. This approach is viable to the company only if the buying process is lengthy or the selling includes extensive technical and commercial negotiations at various levels, including the top management. The industrial buyers insist on buying directly from the manufacturers and the value of each transaction is large. Some of the examples of direct channel are direct sales through the company sales force and direct marketing through direct email, telemarketing, internet marketing, social media marketing and so on. So this is about direct channel structures. Now we'll learn indirect channel structures. In indirect channel structures, the various tasks discussed about, about is uh, the shared both by the manufacturers and the intermediaries. An indirect distribution approach is appropriate when the industrial buyers are widely dispersed, the value of transaction or sales are low, the industrial buyers purchase many product items in one transaction and manufacturer has limited resources. Some of the examples of direct channel are manufacturers representatives or agents, brokers, commission merchants, commission merchants, industrial dealers, then distributors, value added resellers, jobblers, drop shippers, etc. Indirect distribution is used in the industrial chemicals, construction, materials, electric wiring materials and supplies, general industrial machineries, iron and steel products, etc. So this is the diagram of industrial channel structure. So industrial channel structure can be direct or indirect. We have just elaborated both the concepts. Direct channel consists of manufacturing perform the entire task, company sales force, direct email, teleshopping, telemarketing and internet marketing, etc. And indirect that is manufacturers and intermediaries share the task between them. So the examples are manufacturers, representatives or agents, brokers, commission merchants, commission merchants and industrial dealers, distributors, value added resellers, jobblers, drop shippers, etc. Next is types of industrial middlemen. The industrial middlemen are the intermediaries used by the manufacturers to deliver their products to the end users. They are categorized based on the number and the extent to which they specialize in performance of their certain function. Different type of industrial middlemen are manufacturers representatives, also called as agents, brokers, commission merchants, industrial dealers or distributors, value added sellers, drop shippers or jobblers. Now we'll see each and every one in detail. So what is manufacturer's representatives? The manufacturer's representatives like sales agent or manufacturer's agents are very commonly seen middlemen to secure orders from existing and potential customers. They provide relevant information on market conditions to the manufacturers as well as customers. They are paid a certain amount of pre-specified commission on sales and other tasks performed to make the sales. Generally small and medium sized industrial firms use the services of agents in territories with low market potential. Agents are cost effective to, uh, for them because commission is paid as per the order generated. The agents particularly have good knowledge about the product. Their target market besides having excellent contracts with the buyers. Brokers. Brokers are middlemen who represent either the buyer or the seller. They 
help the manufacturers to find the potential buyers and vice versa and take the commission when sales process is complete. Next is commission merchants. They deal with the large quantities of items like raw materials. They are paid commission by the manufacturers when they perform certain functions. Their general functions include getting the raw materials inspected, then negotiating during the sales, and finally close the sale. They receive the commission based on the net sales value as it is compensated to agents and brokers. Industrial distributors. Industrial distributors are important and most preferred middlemen that are typically small and independent serving narrow geographical markets. They perform functions like buying, transportation and warehousing, promotion and selling and offering credit. Because of such varied functions, they are sometimes referred to as full function intermediaries. They are offered trade discounts on the price list of the products as their consumption and compensation. Categories of industrial distributors. Industrial distributors are categorized as general line distributors or mill supplies, houses that stock a wide variety of products and sell to a diversified group of customers. They are referred to as the supermarkets of the industry. The products stocked by them include the maintenance, repair, operating supplies that is MRO, equipment supplies and minor and accessory equipment used in the operations of the business such as hand tools or power tools and conveyors etc. The second type of distributors known as specialized distributors specializes in products they handle for customers they serve. Because of increase in specialized markets, their markets and numbers are increasing. Specialized distributors limit their inventories to a specific product range like bearings, office equipments and supplies, electrical equipment and supplies or the third category called as combination house who sell products that are general and specialized directly to the industrial customers as well as some of the other retailers or dealers value added resellers they add some value or feature to an existing product and send to end users as a new package this is found often in a computer industry where a company purchases computer components and builds a fully operational personal computer. By doing this, the company has added value above the cost of individual computer components. Customers would purchase a computer from the reseller to either save the time or if they do not have the skills to build a unit themselves. Jobless. They get orders from the customers and pass them to the manufacturers through they do not handle the goods physically in the form. They take the title to the product they sell. Jobless specialize in marketing bulky products such as coals, irons, ore, etc that are transported in huge quantities and do not require assorting or grouping of the products. Dropshippers When an online marketer has a certain concern like where to get the good form, where to store them until they are sold and what amount of charge for shipping the goods to the customers. Then dropshippers come to rescue of such marketers who work with the merchants to move the products. Dropshipping is generally used by the website owners like Amazon.com, shop owners and mail orders firms 
who do not stock inventory of the products sold for future delivery through mail order, catalog and internet advertising. Middlemen send single unit orders for products to the manufacturers or major stocking distributors who in turn drop ship the merchandise direct to the customers of the middlemen. Manufacturers providing drop shipping services can gain additional sales, shift advertising costs to middlemen, offer advertising materials and reduce inventory requirements. Middlemen who initiate the dropship orders shift the risk of a stocking inventory to the supply source including the storage, insurance overhead and personal by spending nothing on inventory. Next we will talk about the functions and responsibilities of distributors. Nothing represent a producer from meeting his customers directly and effecting the sales. If he does not use this privilege, he has to borrow the service and services of different middlemen who act as vital role and vital link in the distribution network to pass on production to the actual user and also take the risk of change titles. A full function intermediary or the distributor performs all of the most of the distributor functions like those are displayed on the PPTs, purchasing products from the producer to resale back to the industrial buyers, promoting the product through advertisement, negotiating by offering discounts and securing orders from the customers, extending credit to the customers while reselling the products, sorting the products safety at warehouses and ensuring its availability to the customers, inspecting and testing the product and assigning distinct quality grades that is various grades of products are sold to different end users at different prices. Transporting the product from warehouses to the customer's place. Providing information on product features, price, etc. to the customers and competition, market demand, etc. to the manufacturers. Providing pre-sales and after-sales services to the customers through their technical service personnel. As the intermediaries perform all or most of the above functions, the industrial marketers find it more suitable to use their services rather than doing all the things by themselves. But they should analyze certain functions that are very important for them but cannot be performed effectively due to the reasons like cost effectiveness or service inefficiency. Such tasks should be outsourced to those intermediaries who have the expertise to perform them effectively and efficiently. Reasons for industrial customers preferring the distributors. There are many reasons why industrial customers buy from the distributors. Some of the common reasons include delivery, information, variety and credit. Delivery. Industrial customers, particularly the small scale manufacturers, find the distributors to be more reliable who delivers them goods in less time and at a lesser price. This helps them reduce their inventory level as well as inventory carrying cost. Information. Distributors provide relevant information on various products like technical information, price, availability, quality that helps the customers select and buy the best. Variety. The distributors stock variety of products at one place and caters to all the requirements of the industrial buyers. Credit. The distributors offer credit facility to his reputed and credible buyers whenever they purchase from him. Besides above mentioned, 
it is the relationship and best customer service that matters the most to the customers who prefer a particular distributor. Next part is manufacturers and distributors partners in progress. Though there would be a lot of conflict and disputes existing between the manufacturer and the distributors, both need to maintain good relationship and help them to be partners in progress. The manufacturer should provide the distributors with all the assistance that is economically feasible to enhance the distributor's performance. The assistance from the manufacturer could be in the form of providing increased margin or financial help that stimulates the distributor to increase the inventory levels, improving distributor's performance through deploying its sales force where supplement technical support can be provided or joint sales calls can be done, imparting technical and general training to the distributor personals to improve their effectiveness and strengthen the bond. Simultaneously, the distributor should also execute all their basic functions and meet their responsibilities that have been discussed earlier in a more systematic way that would help the manufacturer perform better. In addition, they should recognize the significant trends unfolding in the industry by understanding the market dynamics and forecasting its future direction. Eventually, the efforts of both the partners in the progress should be grow together and that can happen only through the mutual coordination and understanding each other in a better way. With this, we are moving towards the summary part. So we have seen that there are various channels that are involved in a distribution system that helps the manufacturers to deliver the goods to the end users. Industrial distribution is quite distinct compared to the channel used for consumer goods or services. It carries out the distribution through the direct channel structure that involves the company's sales force and direct marketing through various means. The other way is the indirect channel structure where different kinds of intermediaries are involved like the agents, distributors, brokers, commission merchants, value added resellers, jobless, drop shippers, etc. There are various functions these intermediaries perform that vary from buying the product, promoting and selling, financing or giving credit to buyers, warehousing, grading, transporting, providing information to the customers and suppliers, and providing technical support. Most of the above services are performed by the distributors because of which they are called as full function intermediaries. The distributors are preferred by the industrial customers as they find them more dependable, more various products, offer various products, give liberal credit apart from providing the requisite information about the product, price and other related items. Finally, the manufacturer and the distributor should be partners in progress who has to understand each other and solve any conflict arising between them. Few self-assessment questions for students. What is the need of channel designing and what are the various stages involved in this process? How do you establish a channel objective in the channel design process? What are the various channel constraints and tasks and industrial marketers face in the channel design process? What are the issues involved in identifying the channel alternatives? Explain them.
what are the parameters on which the channel alternatives are evaluated few more questions what are the different techniques used to motivate the channel members how does the industrial marketer select the intermediaries what are the reasons for channel conflicts and how they can be managed how do you evaluate the channel performance that is distribution channel performance what is physical distribution and explain the total cost approach how does physical distribution impact the intermediaries and how can we improve the physical distribution system what are the elements of customer service how does industrial distribution channel differs from the consumer goods distribution channel few more questions explain the needs of distribution channel in industrial marketing what are direct and indirect channel structures what are the functions of industrial distributors why do industrial customers prefer distributors how do jobless and dropshippers differ from each other write short note on the following first commission merchants second brokers third value added resellers we can have one case study small case study ncr ibm and other manufacturers of office machines make a substantial proportion of their sales directly to their industrial users at the same time wholesalers of the office equipment are thriving are these two market segments different or there exists some operational disadvantage that has led to this strategy so explain the case so with this we just finish this particular chapter i wish you best wishes for your studies